So we, um, I'm, I'm really thankful for everyone who came today. I always am, but, but especially today. Um, we have a special guest who's Zooming in. Um, Israel Pakhtar is the pastor rabbi, a Jewish man, uh, lives in Ashdod, uh, Israel, which is from Gaza to Ashkelon. You've been hearing Ashkelon a lot? It's equal distance to Ashdod. So Ash Ashkelon is halfway to Ashdod. So he lives really close to the, um, to the, the situation. And um, we've actually been for years doing ministry when we go to when we minister with Holocaust survivors. This is one of the pastors and ministries that we do that with. And so we would have been leaving for to be with them one week from tonight if everything had not happened. And so he's got quite a story. And let me just say that um, as he gets ready to talk, uh, I asked him how long he wants to share. I'm fully prepared to do a full lesson or short lesson or anything, right? Um, but this is what I said. I said, how long would you like? And he said, whatever you want. And here's what he said. Whatever you want, one minute, two minutes, five minutes. So I said, let's do five. Okay. Because I did not want to put any pressure on him to have to prepare anything. And that was my thought for why I responded like I did. So... Uh, Israel, you can you can do whatever you want is what I'm saying. That's the whole that's the whole point of this. So, but if you go just five minutes, because it's 1230 at night there. Okay, so you got the picture. So I wouldn't want to go too long either. But but he's my he's my friend and he is um, he's got a great ministry and um, really there's at a pastor. Among the pastors and the churches in Israel, I will say this. Beit, Beit Hillel is the leading congregation in Israel when it comes to doing Jewish evangelism. They are the leading congregation on that. And um, Israel, would you share whatever's on your heart? And when you're done, if it seems appropriate to you and me, I'll just maybe we'll just talk and let the people hear whatever you like. But let's, uh, we lost them. Okay, so shalom. Shalom, shalom everyone. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Wonderful. Good to hear your response. Uh, so, yes, shalom from Ashdod, cities that under rocket fire. And uh, three months ago, actually now it's four, four months ago, we have started a congregation in the city of Ashkelon. And congregation is really growing, growing rapidly. I mean, for Israeli ways it's really growing great and fast and many people come into the world and now uh ashkelon really under heavy fire not even speaking about the gaza area what they have experienced and my city also under constant rocket fire uh, uh, as many cities in israel uh, so it is challenging times in israel uh painful times in israel yet uh, God is moving in the hearts of so many people, and we haven't seen such a movement in Israel for quite a long time. It's just incredible. So I'm not going to speak without you about polit political reports or uh, news from the land, because I'm sure you all know. If not, ask your leaders, ask Rabbi Greg, or ask me, and we will talk about it. But I think by now, all the world aware of the terrible, terrible things that happened. Uh, and uh, my situation, you know, I know you're praying for us. I know you're praying for Israel, but also you pray for Beit Halel, for my family. So I just want to give you a short hands up. Uh, both of my sons, my oldest son, who is our youth pastor, and my youngest son, they are in the army right now. And uh, when my son came to evacuate just bodies, already bodies of Israelis, when what he have seen, I just came home uh, shaking, really, literally shaking. So it's 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 tough. Many things we experienced for the first time ever, and uh, you will see uh, October seven will come into the history as one of, actually at most tragical days in the entire history of modern state of Israel. We never have lost so many people in one day, by far. Never have lost so many civilians in one day by very far 
and we have never lost babies and children being beheaded and cut in pieces and all of that. Just, just, just terrible. So you will, rem you will all remember this day. Uh, but today I want to focus uh, on actually what God is doing in Israel right in the middle of uh, a, a sorrow, death, destruction, confusion. What is what God is doing? We have great promise about uh, his salvation for Israel, his protection over Israel. Uh, Bible full of these wonderful promises. And uh, at, in the beginning, it was difficult to see what God is doing uh, because you just see pain, you just see brokenness, you just see what happened. But now as days pass by, I really deeply moved, and not only I, uh, all of our, my, all my congregation, entire congregation, we're all witnesses of sudden shift in the atmosphere. So uh, uh, as a spiritual congregation, I can tell you the event there in Gaza, by Gaza border remind all the Christians and all the Messianic believers and all of us uh, about a reality of the spiritual world, reality of demonic powers, and I can tell you for sure what we experienced, the demonic powers being released in a, in a big way and big numbers. And, uh, you know, reading book of Revelation, uh, there is different scriptures, and I'm not going to speak about where we're at, uh, at, the, at the last days, you know, what's going to happen next. But there, then we can see some just principles and, and many things already happening uh, in our generation. And surely there will be final days, there will be final seals open and all of that. But uh, one of the stories goes, and another seal was open and, and hell opened gates and demonic uh, and evil spirits came out. So that's what we have seen in those days. Uh, just to add to it, I have a friend who is, uh, I have a few friends who have been born in Gaza uh, Christians who've been born in Gaza, raised in Gaza, some of them stayed in Gaza, some of them flee Gaza some years ago. I have a friend who born and raised in Gaza as a Muslim and get saved. And I remember a few years ago, he came back to Gaza and he tried to uh, do outreaches and do social work in Gaza, just, just do it softly. But he was kicked out uh, very quick after pulling lots of resources and money, but just shortly was kicked out. And I remember met, I met him in Jerusalem and he said to me, uh, Pastor Israel, I, and he started to cry, he broke in tears, this old man broke in tears and he said, uh, I feel and I think the throne of Satan was built in Gaza. Well, uh, it looks like, it looks like it's truth, really. Uh, but good news, there were throne of Satan's in the New Testament days in modern day Turkey and I visited those places. There is nothing left, no throne of Satan anymore. The third generation of believers, they overcome and they saw victory and they saw revival instead of throne of Satan. And that's our prayers, that salvation will come and protection of God will, will come over Israel, but also to the people of Gaza, because there are so many children and women that are innocent and they've just been as hostages in this situation. It's difficult and terrible. And we pray when corridors, they call it corridors of humanitarian aid will be open. Uh, we're just talking with Arab brothers in Israel. Israel. We call them Israeli Arabs, Christians from Jerusalem, from Bethlehem, from other places. They're waiting and hoping and praying that this time they can, be, they can join forces and they will be allowed to go in to distribute food, but also to bring the gospel. Because until now, Gospel is forbidden in Gaza. You cannot preach the gospel. No, no local Christians, and there is very, very little number of uh, local Gazatian Christians. Uh, no foreign visitors. No one is allowed to preach the gospel. So hopefully, all this terrible, heartbreaking event will lead to revival or at least some opening for the gospel inside of Gaza, because Israel needs salvation and help, but Gaza needs salvation for sure and need help. Okay, so that's that's a kind of prayer request for Gaza uh, because we really pray and hoping for changes, not only to stop and destroy Hamas, as everyone's speaking about, but also changes in Gaza. 
And by the way, I didn't know if you, if Rabbi, you brought up what does Hamas in Hebrew means. Uh, you know, Hamas is the name of this terroristic organization, but in Hebrew, in biblical Hebrew, Hamas actually, it's evil. It's interesting, right? Uh, this place called by that name, uh, not even saying that Gaza in Hebrew, it's Aza. And Aza in Hebrew is stronghold. It can be positive. Uh, the Psalm of Psalms using this word uh, that love is strong like death. So in Hebrew, it's uh, love is Aza, you know, same word, uh, very strong, stronghold. Anyway, so uh, what happened in Israel? The situation, the, the all these pictures and video footages and stories of survivors uh, that came up uh, just broke heart of the nation. Uh, lots of questions, why and how and what and who's guilty and who's not. Uh, in the air, but most uh, important thing, right before this uh, war, beginning of this war, Israel was going through deepest and heaviest division in the in the in the entire history of Israel. The nation of Israel never ha have been such divided politically, and it came not just if, uh, to to the point of different opinions, but it was very hostile, full of hatred. I really was looking like we had into the, like a civil war, I don't know. Uh, there were lots of concerns about the situation and nothing could stop it. Now, when this operation or attack on Israel happened, the atmosphere changed in a minute. All nations stopped debating, stopped talking about differences and just united together right away. It was just incredible, almost supernatural, just in a few minutes. All country changed, so uh, we see deep, deep trauma and brokenness in the hearts of people, which is good in many ways. I mean, there are some people who've been there at the event and they are broken, they need healing. But actually, the nation was shaken and uh, humbled, literally humbled. And you know, I drove both of my sons to different military bases and that day, uh, same day, uh, afternoon, they were called to leave everything and just go to the army. So uh, first my youngest son, so I drove him and right away my called all the son called me, daddy, will you take me to the military base and let's drive and pray. Uh, so I remember coming with my youngest son, staying among the soldiers. And I was speaking about soldiers who've been through the war, who have seen blood, who have seen uh, uh, terrorism, they have seen many things. But they were quiet, shaken, uh, and they were humble. And, you know, been waiting for military bus and military pickup. Uh, you know, we brought them, we brought our kids, uh, sons, to, to, to one point, and then army would collect them. So staying there, I remember in the past, I would hear all kind of stories of greatness of Israel, greatness of IDF, Israeli army, and uh, how much we are strong, how much, how much we are powerful, and all of that. This time, it was totally different atmosphere. People were humble, people were broken, and people started to pray. All nations started to pray. So in days after, second, third, fourth day after the uh, this terrible event, uh, all nations started to pray. And I can tell you, the testimonies come up, and uh, guys who've been hiding from terrorists called the police and said, Hey, here is terrorist. There is dozens of them around me with the, with the guns. Uh, come and pick me up. Come and help. Send the army. And police officers officially make a statement, and they told them, "We cannot help you right now. We are we are overwhelmed. You need to wait. The cup will come. The cup will come, but not now." And they would say, and guys would say, "Ask. So what shall I do now?" The the police officers will tell them, "Hide and pray." Say, what do you, do you say? Pray? Yes, pray. Pray to God that He will help you. And I mean, it's never happened in Israel before that police officers will tell you official statement, make official statement, pray to God, pray to Jehovah, pray to God, you know, Baruch Hashem, pray to God. And uh, when testimonies come out, people are religious people, secular people, atheists, totally secular Israelis, they all been saying, I have been praying. And friends would ask, Really? But you don't, you normally you don't pray. Yeah, but I had no choice. And I prayed like crazy and cried to God. So we hear all these stories again and again.
people were crying to God and praying and many testifying that it helped. And I remember the highlight for me about this prayer uh, movement in Israel uh, during the attack. Uh, one at uh, the you know the secular channel, the most secular channel in Israel, and it's one of the central channels. And lady who is officially known as atheist. Uh, so she actually was interviewing guys. So what did you experience today? What did you do? And they would share their stories. But I said, but my friend has been kidnapped, or my friend has been wounded, and I don't know what's going to be with them. Or my friends are still locked in the houses and they need rescue. Different story by story by story by story. And I said, we're all praying. And suddenly this atheist lady on TV, on, <laughs> on prime time on TV, said with a very serious face, we all join your prayers. And then the kind of <laughs> then it, she kind of froze. You know, she just she not used to say that because you know she's atheist and she goes like. And we join all the good wishes of people. So uh, we see amazing movement of prayer. And at the same time, I want to tell you, Holy Spirit is doing something in the nations. You know, uh, we have seen different war situations, different attacks. My city under heavy rocket attack, not the first time. So we are, we've been ready uh, we know how what to do and how to do. Uh, we mobilized our team right away and right now when the many moms, uh, especially young moms with little kids who send their husbands to the front line or uh, Jewish refugees from Ukraine who came to Israel, uh, like refugees, make made Aliyah their home with little kids and you know those who are new in the land or uh, uh, middle class uh, lower middle class communities uh, many of them have no car so or husband already took his car and driven to the military base so they are stuck home they cannot go out and buy food they need to take you know buses and that but it's dangerous so as a team in Ashdod and now we're moving to Ashkelon as well and other cities we're going and helping it's and, and it's beautiful to see uh, the smiles of people, the encouragement, you know, we're coming as believers, bringing them food and all the supplies, but also testifying about Christians, uh, and it's amazing. But also, you know, last operations and last uh, war and uh, rocket attacks, when we had them, uh, I would receive some text messages. Well, first of all, I want to give credit and <laughs> praise God for you guys, because Gateway Church and Gateway Jewish Ministry always been praying for us. They always would call me and ask me, how do you do? And probably most of you know, uh, and you always been praying for us. Uh, but but then I would initiate and I would text some pastors say no and ask them for prayer and some would respond. Uh, but this time, it's unbelievable. All these days until today, including today, I receive an uh, hundreds of messages every day from different nations, from pastors, from people, from different prayer movements, and all of them telling me uh, how they pray for Israel, how much they pray for Israel, how they uh, mobilize prayer for Israel, and suddenly they are coming to recognition that it is movement of the Holy Spirit that we never have seen before. And I'm speaking about Africa, India, Asia, uh, European countries, Central America, and, and more and more. It's amazing. Even Russia and Ukraine, I receive messages from Russia, from Russian Christians, and from Ukrainian Christians uh, staying, uh, saying, we are under bomb, bomb attacks, we know what you're facing, how we can pray for you. I mean, it's incredible, but it is movement of the Holy Spirit and Holy Spirit rising prayer. And uh, let me share with you just my personal uh, testimony or vision I have received uh, three days ago. So uh, I heard the message of one of the imam. Uh, imam is the spiritual leader, like rabbi, but for mask, spiritual leader of mask. And it was a known leader from, from, from Gaza. And he was calling up uh, all the Muslims to attack Israel. And they, he literally said, uh, sorry, I don't have English translation. It's Arabic with Hebrew subtitles, but probably it will come in English as well. But he was crying and saying, Israel is weak right now. Did you see what we could do to Israel? How much damage we did? How much uh, people we killed? So now it's a time for all Islamic uh, nations to rise and just 
overnumbered Israel. And I was calling and saying, Egyptians, come through the border and attack Israel. Lebanon, Hezbollah, start your war. Uh, war. Uh, Jordan, Leb uh, Syria. And actually, he was also speaking to Iran and other countries, but he said to Jordanians, he said, Jordanians, there's millions of Palestinians in Jor Jor Jordan. Take your guns and weapons. Just walk to the border and you will do, do what we did. And uh, I heard this message. Uh, I, I I was reading carefully, and I felt like I need to pray. I need to pray and process it. So I went to prayer, and suddenly I saw vision, uh, vision and scenery that had been changed uh, time after time. So first vision, uh, Lebanon border, Hezbollah attacking Israel, and uh, destruction is coming over Israel. And uh, we come into the bad and uh, bloody war. Then suddenly things changed, and I see there is no war, just little escalation, some bombs flying, flying both directions, and I think everything is stopped down and war didn't break out. Then I saw Jordanian border, and I saw all these uh, uh, calls to fight and attack Israel, and uh, I saw people rising up and going to Israel, and then I saw another uh, scene that actually they're going through and uh, uh, Jordanian military just st staying uh, uh, moving out because they won't fight their own people, and that's true. And they're moving out, and all these uh, hundreds of thousands or, or, or dozens of thousands attacking Israel and bringing damage until until Israel respond. Then I see different scene. They actually come to the border and they cannot cross the border. And then another little uh, different scene: uh, guys crying to attack Israel in, in Jordan, crying to attack Israel, uh, crying, 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 screaming, uh, intimidating. And then everything stopped, stopped sh sh screaming and went back home to normal life. And uh, I was asking the Lord, "What is it?" I've seen all kind of different pictures, and then I understood that actually God is showing me different. Uh, ways how situation can escalate or come down, and prayers of Israel and prayers of the of the nations will make a difference. So now it's a time for prayer. And by the way, all these days we've been praying and interceding for peace and Lebanon border. And as you can see, uh, praise the Lord. There have been some escalation, some movement, some little shootings, but. It's not the war. It's not full-scale war. Praise God, because Israel don't need another war right now and have war from the from the two sides. Uh, I mean, even though we say our government saying we're ready, but still it would be very difficult and very 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 heavy war. So uh, prayers make a difference. We we'll all know, but now it's a time to pray for Israel and to uh, mobilize prayer. As we mobilize our team, as we mobilize our efforts to use this momentum, this time to be a blessing, to be a light, to be a help. In the same way, it's time for Christians, time for Messianic believers to mobilize prayer and pray, pray for Israel. Because like I said, there is demonic powers being released uh, in obvious way. Uh, what we have seen, it's terrible. I mean... Uh, I, it's hard to believe that people can do such a evil. Uh, so we know we know our fight is not against people. It's not against even even Hamas. Uh, our fight is against our war. Is against demonic powers, principalities, spiritual municipalities, and all these power powers of darkness. Ephesians six speaks about it. So. Uh, but we have great weapons. We have name of Yeshua that above all the names, name of Yeshua that can change situation when we pray in his name. And I can tell you, Israel is strong and we will make it. Israel won't fail. We have great promises and God is faithful. Uh, but even though Israeli army is strong and people of Israel are strong, they will adjust, they will, they will fight back and they will, they will see victory. But I can tell you, uh, people of Israel crying to God now. I told you the story. Everyone cries, Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem, God help me. And they cry to God. And God hear a cry of his people and he come in to help. But we as Messianic believers, we as Christians, we have the name of Yeshua. And Israelis don't pray in the name of Yeshua. So they don't have, right now, they don't have access to the name of Yeshua or the faith in the name of Yeshua. But we do. 
No, our prayers will make a difference. Our prayers will put down terror. Our prayers will release angelic visitations and miracles and wonders and God's protection. That's that's what our prayers do. And for uh, for closing, I want to share with you uh, just a brief testimony about heroes. I know every war uh, needs a hero. And right now we have seen many heroic acts and people who've been risking their lives and actually not only risking their lives, but also giving their lives to protect others. And uh, yesterday was the most difficult day in my life because it was our Shabbat service, like your service today, Friday night in Israel. And I did funeral of the young boy who raised in my home. He was the best friend of my son. He's the son of my elders in my congregation who fell in battle because he was on the first line right there by the Gaza border when attack happened. And let me tell you something uh, that actually connected also to spiritual life and the uh, and, uh, zeal and desire to protect our land. This young, young guy, uh, just normal guy, just normal Israeli guy, believer. Actually, he wasn't walking uh, strong in the Lord since his uh, a call to army. But last two weeks, he started to come back to congregation and he testified that actually he's praying again, he's turning to Yeshua again. He is growing, uh, growing strong in his faith again. Uh, he come through life, life uh, threatening situations. He, he had been in different uh, missions. Uh, he went to Syria, you know, like uh, <laughs> unofficially. So he was in different places. But uh, what happened October 7 was just amazing. No, he was uh, at the military base right at the Gaza border with uh, another 12 fellow guys. So altogether, altogether uh, 12 guys, 12 boys. The oldest was 23 years old, uh, David Ratner. He was 20 years old, and they've been attacked by 400 terrorists. And he was the only guy with the machine gun. Others been with the, just normal guns, normal military guns. He was with Israeli, it's called Negev, Israeli machine gun. So they started to fight. And uh, his sur survived commander testify. He, he said, I've been to many battles. I've been to many uh, different situations, but I never have seen such a soldier, such a fighter as these guys. So they've been fighting uh, 10 hours. Now, after two hours, uh, he been hit by bullet in his neck, and uh, most likely it was already a deadly wound. He couldn't make it either way, but he refused to be evacuated, and he continued to fight because he said, they're coming for our families, they're coming for our people, and they're coming to kill our people and destroy. We need to fight. And he continued to fight, wounded in his neck, bleeding eight more hours. I think it's supernatural because, you know, normally it's not happened. So eight more hours. And uh, his commander said, when we lost our power, because uh, by the end of 10 hours, six uh, soldiers were already killed. And, and he said he screamed at us. He was spitting blood. Uh, he was already white, lost lots of blood, but he was screaming to us and saying, keep shooting, keep shooting, keep keep." keep keep put down terrorists, we need to protect our land. And he was screaming at them and saying, we will go home alive, we will go home alive, we will make it, keep shooting. And uh, he said he was waking them up and shooting. And literally all of them said, if not for David Ratner, we'll all be dead. And these 400 terrorists would walk through our military base and kill probably hundreds more Israelis. So eventually, uh, they said actually he took down at least 30 terrorists, because his bullets are different, so they knew at least 30 terrorists, wounded many, took out of battle many, uh, but by the end of 10 hours, he died standing on his legs. He was standing, shooting, and the next second, he just fell dead. Uh, what a hero. So uh, my prayer request, you know, it's the first time ever we lost a messianic soldier, we're always in God's divine protection. But also whenever I have seen such a situation, a deadly situation, what Israel experienced. So it's the first time ever. It's a heavy loss for our congregation. And right now, 28 soldiers, just from my congregation, 28 eight soldiers on the front line. My youth pastor, my, our worship pastor, and many, many other guys, they just at, at the military bases and in the, in the front line. So when you pray for Israel, pray for Messianic soldiers, 
pray for our guys. Pray for Ratner, Ratner's family. Uh, praise God, they have five more kids. It's a big Jewish family, five more kids. And David was oldest. And, you know, when we heard his story of his his uh, uh, last battle, everyone who knows him said, that's the David we knew. Uh, I always called him Davidush. You know, we say David, but I would call him Davidush. Uh, that the Davidish we knew, not our guy. So uh, it's a very difficult time for Israel. Once again, there's lots of demonic uh, powers working in the era around Israel, against Israel, many calls. But at the same time, we see God is moving, changing lives, uh, changing our nation. It feels like He doing some God doing some surgery in the hearts of our nation. We literally see people just changed. And I told you, from deepest division ever to greatest unity ever. It's just incredible, but God is moving. So that's the best time to pray for Israel. You know, uh, we are at Parashat Shavua, the beginning of the Torah reading, and uh, it's a new beginning for Israel. I think it is prophetic times, differently, definitely historical times. We're all going to remember those days, but... It's a time to stand with Israel, pray for Israel, and we're going to see even more miracles and uh, wonders and glory of God and salvation of Israel. Thank you very much. Shabbat Shalom, dear friends. Can you hear me now, Israel? Yes. Ah, okay. I do need to use the mic then. Okay. Um, wow. Um, we do need to pray. We'll talk about that after after he's he can go to, go to bed. But um, you know, as I'm listening to you, I'm I'm just the the thought that just came to my mind was, and I remember hearing uh, Rabbi Sachs of the Great Great Britain. Um, I mean, if I look this way, I probably look like I'm looking at you, even though all I see is me. Um, but um, he he called the Jewish people the people of of hope, and he he you know this idea that we are just we have this unique hope, and you really exemplify it. I mean, I just I just I'm I'm like wow. Um, because you're in the middle of something that nobody here has ever experienced. Let me let me ask you. This may help some people here. If you you, you talked about prayer, that's probably number one. How do you keep? How do you maintain your hope? Well, uh, first of all, Bible. <laughs> thinking of, yeah, I know it's it's a funny way answer, but it is true. You know, the thinking of all the promises of God. And all the miracles that, that God has done for us in the days of the Bible and in the modern days and history of Israel and in my personal life, thinking of what God has done in the past, uh, it encourages me to believe uh, and, and, and wait for next miracles uh, about the future. But also, there is one more thing that actually undescribable. You know, when sirens off and rockets fly, I feel like special, I don't know, like a bubble around me. And it's not about me. It's not me. I couldn't do it by myself. I couldn't create it. It's just supernatural shalom, supernatural peace, just uh, covering us. And I, I, I don't be afraid, really. I have had a hard time even walking toward boom shelter because I know that I know that I know God is with me. And same feeling we have, all of us have, all our team has. It's amazing, but it's just supernatural. We feel glory of God. We feel comfort of the Holy Spirit. And I see people around me scared, but I'm not. And sometimes even finding like, man, how I don't feel any fear, you know? But I can tell you, there is days when I fight my fears, when I need to do and fight my battles. I'm just a person like you. I'm not a hero. But I want to tell you, that's probably what's going to happen when we need his help, when we need his grace that actually according to the Bible, sufficient for all of us. When we're going to go through the valley of death or valley of tears, God is going to show his glory in a supernatural way. And that's my experience right now. It's amazing. Uh, we cry a lot about this boy, David. Yet I see his ma mama and daddy. They're full of hope. 
And even Chaim, his name, his parents' name, Chaim and Miriam, they testify that, uh, I, do I need to cry more? I don't know, but I, I feel joy of the Lord. I know my son, my son in heaven with Yeshua, and we're all going to be there. So it's indescribable comfort of the Holy Spirit. So when you pray comfort, comfort, uh, my people says the Lord, that's probably what we're receiving and walking in. So really, it's all about Yeshua, all about his grace and his working in us. Thank you. I, 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 another just um, maybe a uh, more pointed question how we can help you pray. But in addition to prayer, your website is BeitHalel.org. BeitHalel.org. Is there an opportunity so on sorry, that web? Beit, Beit Halel, uh, uh, how do you call it, the line, Israel.org. Okay, Beit Halel, yeah, Beit Halel slash dash. Dash, dash, yeah, dash Israel. Dash Israel.org. Yeah. Okay, I thought I copied that, but apparently I didn't. So Beit Halel hyphen Israel dot org. Is there something on that website where if people want to give to you, they can do that? Uh, yes, there is a donate button, and the biggest need for us right now, it's actually humanitarian relief, uh, because it's a wonderful testimony to come to houses of Israelis, and, and, and actually hundreds of families waiting for us, to come to their homes and say, hey, your gift this gift, this food comes from Christians, from Messianic community, from your brothers in America. And uh, it's just, people just cry when they hear that. Right. So if we can, we can empower them to be a voice and to help people. Before we leave here, if you could pull that site, not after, after Israel's off, but if you could pull the site up so that they could see it, right? And, um, and that way everybody could see the site so they can see the, the link and all, and all that. Um, I don't want. I don't want to go too long, but I. I, I just. I, I want to give an opportunity. If there's somebody who has, uh, please don't expect it because I open it up for one question that there'll be a second question. Don't expect that. I'll tell you right now, okay? Because we can't do that. But but is there someone who has a question? Raise your hand, and I'll I'll call on you. Maybe not, but someone have a question. I just have a comment. Okay. That in Shannon. So thank you, Rabbi. Thank you so much for the testimony because this week I've been pretty disturbed to say the least, hurting, disturbed, fearful, frightful, yet I've always been very confused at looking at this going, how is the hope of Israel the way it is right now? And you exemplified it beautifully. And just by this is instilled in me a strength in my faith, which is extremely hopeful. So thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Hallelujah. You are an amazing man. Um, one more. One more. Stephen in the back. I need you to speak up. Okay. Uh, thank you, Rabbi, for your service. For Yeshua, our Lord. My question is, how do you balance uh, giving comfort uh, in the midst of tragedy and mentioning what we know is the ultimate hope, Yeshua, without trying to seem like we're um, uh, being manipulative or taking advantage of the situation, because, yeah, thank you. Could you hear him? I, can you repeat it, please? Um, how do you manage balancing between giving hope and comfort in these kinds of situations against the idea that the real hope is in Yeshua? How do you balance these two? Well, uh, we always open about who we are. Uh, so we do mostly in situations like that when we help people, we do soft evangelism. So we don't really go deeper, but we're telling them why we do that. And that's evangelism by itself. Because, you know, Israelis, if you tell them you have to believe, you have to come to Yeshua, you have to believe in Messiah, they feel kind of put, put pressure, you know, they don't like it and they won't listen. But if you tell them, uh, you know why? Why Christians do what they do? Why Christians pray for you? Why Christians help you? They have questions. Yeah, I want to know why. Tell me why. And then I would say, Christians believe that. <laughs> and we're speaking about Yeshua. We're speaking about Messiah. We're speaking about their prayers. And they're okay with that. They came with that because they don't feel pressure when you uh, address them in that way. Uh, so we call it soft evangelism, and it really works. 
because then they listen carefully and thinking and some of them even open their hearts to know more. Thank you. I want us to pray before he goes. So, um, Jim, do you want to come up? Jim and Jennifer, do you want to come up and pray and lead us in prayer? So Jim and Jennifer lead, lead us in prayer in this room. There are prayer leaders in this room. So we'll have them lead us in prayer. Kind of calling you on the spot, but the instant in season and out of season. <laughs> yeah. So Rabbi, um, appreciate your sons being where they are and, um, that they were willing to fight and are continuing to fight it. It was in the military as well. I know Pastor Greg has been as well. So um, David had his mighty men of valor. So I think you have two sons of valor and God will certainly um, cover them in prayer, but also they'll see miracles in this. And I know they're gonna come back and tell you and it'll be exciting. So Father, I, I thank you for <clears throat> the congregation and for, you know, the families that are, um, they're needing the support. And I know that you see them. And in some cases, they may not feel like they're being seen or heard. But I know that we have great spiritual ears and you know how to connect with us. So I thank you for opening those doors, opening those, um, those connections, those miracles, those logistics that get, um, your love, your support um, to the folks that need it right now. So I thank you for uh, blessing the entire congregation, the pastors that are, you know, out there in battle. The worship pastor, I'm sure, is doing what he has to do duty-wise, but he's also worshiping and praising you in the midst of all that. So I thank you for comforting them and comforting them in the, the sleep that they can get, whatever rest they get, that it's the rest that they need. So I thank you for blessing them, that we get to be a part of praying for Israel, and that there'll be miracles on um, here as well as there. In the name of Yeshua, amen. 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 Is that good? Thank you both. Um, Israel, thank you. I, I really, um, I think that this is this is an important um, time for all of us, for you and us, because um, our people love you and they want to know how to love you better. So um, we're going to love you enough to let you go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and Thank I do you. look. I, 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 I would have loved to have seen you next week. We would have seen you one week from tonight. We were one week from tonight. We would have left for Israel. It's, but uh, we'll see you soon. See God you. bless you. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. Love you.